Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have the Hollybro Copus 2 and uh, as you can tell here it comes with a really really nice slim bag. I really do love this. It looks really nice quality. So first of all you get your quadcopter here fully set up antennas on it's using a really nice lollipop epoxy antenna. I've never seen this antenna before and I really am falling in love with it. I'm, I think I'm gonna start picking up some of these. I don't know how it's gonna test but um, or the overall the stiffness, I'm, I'm just really in love with the stiffness here. I know that sounds kind of wrong, but you know, this is a common issue with some of the VTX antennas that I use. So that's one thing. Let's start from the outside. So as you can tell, we have some premium motors. We have the T-Motor F40s Pro V2, and these are the 2400 KV. These are really, really, really great motors. These are premium price motors as well as premium performing motors. So just right off the bat, this thing should be a beast. Now, moving up the step, if you follow the wires, you're going to hit the ESC. Now, the ESC here, what they're using is the Tico 32 4-in-1 ESC. This is by far, till this date, one of the best 4-in-1 ESCs I've ever tested. Noise testing, I'll leave a picture of the graph here, maybe compare to something else. But this thing tests absolutely phenomenal. I've flown it, and I love it. And a lot of people would agree by this. So, we also have a buzzer if you take a look there, so that's really nice. Uh, the overall execution inside is really well made I mean it's absolutely nice so I really do like that and they added these glue here because a lot of people are probably popping caps off when they're putting things like their standoffs here so that's a nice addition here so this is the v2 Tico 32 form 1 ESC for a flight controller they're using the Hollybro Tico uh, f7 flight con oh, Tico the Hollybro f7 flight control they have two versions they have an all-in-one and a normal flight controller this is a normal flight controller because it takes everything from the ESC up to here and then it processes everything so this is an f7 flight control with the ICM gyro which is a sensitive gyro so if this is executed correctly you're gonna have a very beautiful responding performing quadcopter so that's nice. For VTX, they're using the AT Lattle V2 production model, which is a really good VTX. I'm not really a VTX testing guy, but it works great. And it does have smart audio, as I believe. I don't know what protocol it's using, but uh, what it means is you can control it through the Betaflight OSD, which is really nice. It does have a microphone on board, does have LEDs, all that kind of crazy good stuff. Also, MMCX port. And I believe they're using SMA port here. So uh, everything in there so far is absolutely premium as well on the outside. So for camera, they're using a run cam. I don't know which one exactly, but the way that this thing is mounted is via 3D printed TPU mounts. But the quality on these TPU mounts is superb. I mean, the 3D print quality. Usually when I get 3D printed parts, it's absolute crap for frames, but this looks really nice. And as you can tell, it does have some dampening effect right there. So that's overall very good for your video feed. Not that you'd need it, but it's also nice to have. So another awesome feature is that it will give you a 90 degree tilt. The way that's set up, the amount of space, it's really well thought out. This thing has been really well thought out. Camera protection, uh, I don't know. It seems kind of protected. Let's see. I don't know, you, yeah, you decide. I'm not gonna decide on that. I've only broken a couple cameras in my life, so for me, it's not really a big deal. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? The frame, the upper plate here, I believe is uh, Three millimeters, if I remember. Yes, I think it's three millimeters or four millimeters here. The arms are five millimeters and the bottom plate is four millimeters. Now, if you could tell, there's this little white line in the middle. Now, this white line here is foam. So this is this is a foam sandwiched between two carbon fiber plates. If they're executed correctly, it should be very rigid and very strong. However, this thing has its ups and downs. Now, it makes the quad lighter, that's one thing, and it kind of reduces structural integrity. But however, hopefully in return, this makes the spare parts cheaper. Now, that's said and done with. It is a true X, uh, no, sorry, not a true X, a stretch X frame. Now, I'm not a big fan of stretch X frame, but if this thing wins me over, then it's an absolute beast. That's, that's, I'll just tell you that right now. So that's one thing. Another thing is that it is, I just mentioned, stretch X five inch frame. So the arms are replaceable. Each arm is replaceable. And the ease of replacing an arm is phenomenal. And uh, it's really nice. I just imagine myself, if I broke an arm, what would I do? So let's just see if we could take a look in here. So as you can tell here that the arm has this little nut-shaped hexagon kind of thing going on for it right there. So you can just drop the nut in, screw your screw in. I mean, once you take it off, or if you want to take it off, just, just unscrew this part right here, the screw on the bottom. Let's just get the camera to focus a little bit. It's too close. There we go. So you would unscrew this, unscrew from the standoff, boom, take your arm out, put your new arm in, drop the nut right there, and then start screwing it in. Really nice, you can just put your finger right there and then just start screwing in. So that's really awesome. That's a huge, huge, huge plus, which is ease of access on the field is a must have these days, especially for me. Um, and I'll 
pretty sure if someone's gonna race with this it's, it's also really a must-have now i can see for some reason if i broke a motor i just pop off the top plate and i can access the esc right there and just remove the 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 motor and then set up a new motor right there which is really nice as well same thing goes for the backside but the backside there the f flight controller portrays back a little bit more so it might be a little bit difficult tyler recommended you pop that off so you don't bridge any of the SMD components on the flight controller. So it does have a buzzer, as you can tell right there. So that's really nice. Um, a couple things that I might have changed is obviously this is not a big issue. Is uh, make this smaller, maybe half sized here, uh, because this kind of can introduce noise into the system here. And I do like this. They put this. Uh, I think it's called liquid tape, and uh, that will you know reduce the chance of you possibly shorting this out with something i don't know i've never done that's never happened to me but it's really nice and really thoughtful they did that so i really do like that i've never seen that before actually i never even thought about it before so that's that's really awesome especially if some water hits it and it like drips but i mean yeah that's a whole different story another thing is i wish there was a different upper plate to be honest it's nice and all but i mean i, I want something to match the arms here like to give it that little extra you know it's too squared you know it's just it's really squared I'm going to try to design one for it, and I'm going to write Hollybro and hope maybe they'll use it. That would be super awesome. I'll design a really nice looking one. There's no need for it. It's not going to make anything different, but I just want to give it that little extra sharpness because it just feels too square for me. So that's something. Maybe like some little fangs. I think I mentioned it in the vlog uh, in the morning. So yeah, that's something of that nature. So oh yeah, for receiver, they're using the new FR Sky uh, RXR, I think. I forgot what it's called. I keep forgetting. The name of it but yeah that's what they're using up here and i i think it is uh turned on via usb so right now once we start setting this up uh we're gonna go ahead and go through the beta flight. i'm just curious to see i'm just gonna plug in the usb now i want to see if the uh, receiver boots up here awesome so the receiver does boot up so we're gonna go ahead and bind it to a qx7 because this is an fr sky it just comes if you want it pre-installed with a receiver then it'll come with an fr sky receiver so let's take a look at some of the things that it comes with they do give you some uh, dial prop 5045C. Uh, they give you two sets of these guys, so that's really nice. Good, that's good props. And they do a bunch. They give you a bunch of extras, like a goodie bag here. Just one goodie bag. Uh, it has some extra zip ties, some extra heat shrink for this. The motor nuts here, and then it has the controller for the camera, as well as the card for the VTX to tell you the channels, and as well as the run cam stuff that comes with the run cam box in here. So it's, it's really, really beautiful. And it does have extra tape for your gyro if you ever needed it, and as well as an extra uh, wire here for the gyro. If Hopefully you'll never need that. I've never needed those. And they give you this little paper that gives you the spare parts list, so you can go ahead and check those out if you, if you needed it. Oh yeah, they also have this on the bottom, I forgot to show you. So they have an anti-slip battery pad here, which is also really nice, and everything is countersunk. And by the way, yeah, it uses 20 by 20 uh, holes also. If you wanted to ever upgrade to some kind of a 20 by 20 stack, you can go ahead and do that, or just get the frame. If you get the frame itself, you can use 20 by 20 as well as 30.5 by 30.5 or cold 30 by 30 uh, flight controller stack. So let me prepare everything, and uh, let's start setting this up in beta flight and binding this guy. All right, so first things first, and what I highly recommend because, uh, you know, th is to take off the, the upper plate here. Now, I've done this a couple times where I try to go ahead and uh, bind it with a, with, a, with a screwdriver or something or try to find it, but then I would hit something and I would just fry the flight control. So I'd highly recommend you take off the upper plate. And it's only four screws. It uses two millimeter uh, M2, sorry, two, M2, so they're M3 screws, which is three millimeter screws, but the two millimeter hex driver head thingy so yeah all right so let's remove this guy here all right so there we go I'm just bring in something here so I don't lose them okay all right so what we want to do is we want to be careful so I'd highly recommend you just push it off to the side here and don't add too much stress so our boot button is right there so what I want to do is I want to hold this in and then plug in the USB so okay and make sure the carbon fiber check this out so I think that's the reason, check, oh, that's very smart. I think that's the reason why they put the copper, uh, the, the, the liquid tape here. Uh, because as you can tell, what I was doing right now is I was pushing towards this to try to, you know, so I could come in and bind it and plug in your battery. If you're not doing the USB method, you just possibly just fried your, your ESC and fried everything and your battery probably caught on fire. So yeah, so just be extra careful with that. That's the reason why I think they did it like that. So what I want to do is I want to kind of keep this away on an angle here where I know the carbon fiber is not touching anything here. And I want to go ahead and try to grab this guy. Make sure I'm clicking the button. 
I really hate these buttons. I really do hate these buttons on these receivers. There we go. That's clicked in. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in the USB here. And if you're not sure you click the button, the first thing you want to do, let's check this out. Plug it in first. Oh, see, I almost touched the frame again. So I have to move this guy here. You just got to be very, very careful. So make sure the carbon fiber is not touching anything. And uh, let's just plug it in. See how it boots up here. So we got a blue light and one that's just blinking. Okay, so that's what, that's how we know that it's not in bound mode, in bind mode. And you could tell that my, my carbon fiber still managed to touch the... Uh, the quadcopter here so just be careful some stupid mistake like this could ruin your whole quadcopter without you even knowing all right so let's go ahead and do this again okay i think i have the button clicked i guess not i didn't have it clicked so i'm holding it again okay that seems right yeah so it should stay solid like that okay that's awesome i want to be very careful here okay i want to move this guy away all right, let's bring in the QX7 here. We're going to go ahead and boot this guy. Okay, whatever, warnings. All right. So as you can tell here, my QX7 Plus, look at that. I haven't even been using this. If I'm using it, I'm just saying the tape is kind of wearing out. And it's just been in the shop here, so it hasn't been doing anything. So let's go ahead and create a new model. So we're going to go to new model, create model. Okay. So And then we're going to go to page, and we're going to call it B. I recommend you actually call it something so let's go here now I don't know exactly which uh, software it's using here I don't know if this will even bind maybe I need to update this guy so let's just go to d16 and we're gonna go to bind okay I could see it bound because now it's blinking over there it was solid red and now it's blinking so it bound to d16 that's nice so before you cancel this just unplug this guy all right and then go ahead and exit off of this Okay, so now in theory we should be connected. So how can we tell that we're connected? Well, I don't recommend you plug in a battery just yet. So what we're gonna do is just close it back up real quick. And then we're gonna plug it in back into Betaflight and double check the uh, receivers tabs there. So let's just see, this thing came off. All right, we're gonna have to figure out a way to do this. All right, that's fine, I'll fix that later. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and just return the screws to how they were. All right, so everything is now into place. Let's go ahead and jump into Betaflight. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and reconnect it to the PC. And uh, let's go ahead, jump into Betaflight and see what's up. So let's connect this guy. All right, and let's go ahead, jump into Betaflight and double check our setup here. So there we go. All right, guys, so now we have the Betaflight open and it's currently connected to the PC. Let's go ahead and connect. And uh, what we want to do is we want to go to the receivers tab, which is the first thing, just to double check everything is working. So as you can tell, I'm switching, what is this, yaw, correct, throttle, correct, and roll is correct, and pitch is correct. So everything is currently correct here. If it wasn't correct, then you would want to switch this to FR Sky and check. And if it, if it doesn't work still, then you go to default and uh, one of them should work. I mean, if the, 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 everything was just all mixed up, let's check out the modes. So the modes here is mode one is arm. Okay. We have no mode set up mode two. I mean, uh, auxiliary two is uh, horizon. Now I highly recommend you remove horizon because horizon is the thing that makes your quad flip. Even if you hold it all the way to the right. And that could be kind of dangerous if you're thinking you're going to pull pitch forward. This thing will just do a front flip and land in the ground or come back and hit you in the face. So I'd highly recommend you remove that. Add angle mode. The reason why I like to add angle mode is because let's just say there's a bee around me and I, I just wanted to move. I just stick it in angle mode, push the throttle a little, and now I know my quad is leveled. It's not going to come crashing down full throttle. And that's why I add angle too. And I'll show you how to set that up inside the uh, uh, transmitter right now. So let's go down a little bit. Uh, beeper. Let's add beeper to auxiliary three. Okay. So we want to move it all the way here. So when we activate it, it goes all the way here. You know what? Let's go step by step. So we said arm is auxiliary one. Now the auxiliary start counting after channel four. So this would be channel five. So let's grab this guy. Okay. And uh, let's go here. So we want to go to, I think the mixers tab. Okay. Right there. So start, starting at channel five, that's auxiliary one in beta flight. So we said this was the arm. So let's click on it and you want to go to source here. And we're going to click source 
and put whatever one you want as arm. Now, I usually tend to like, I think this one. Yeah, this one. See, so as you saw, it switched to SF. So now we have SF. And if we take a look into the uh, beta flight, you can see that little tab going. So when it's default like this, and once we click it, now that's armed right there. You can see that orange dot moving back and forth. All right. So now we said the angle was mode two, uh, for auxiliary two. So this will dictate uh, the mode of our quadcopter. So let's go here and uh, auxiliary two would be channel six. So we want to go down to source right there, click source. And I like a three position switch. So I'm going to use this one here. Okay, so it switched to SC and then we press exit, exit again, exit again. Now we're back and we have channel six as SC. Now if you could tell here, if I click once, it'll go in the middle, which is 1500, which we have nothing set there. And if we click again, also nothing set. So these two mean that it's in acro mode, which means there's no stabilization. And once we pop it back into the first default location, when you turn on the device, it's in angle mode. So if I had a bug around me or something, I go like this, I give it a little throttle and um, I just clear away the bug or clear away and just make sure nothing's going to bite me or some of that nature. So that's what I like to do here. All right. So buzzer we said was auxiliary three. Let's scroll down a little bit. So as you can tell, buzzer right here is auxiliary three. So auxiliary three is going to be channel seven. So let's go ahead here and we're going to go to source, click source. Now I know there's a momentary position switch. So once I click this, it'll change that right there. Okay, so that's nice. And as you can tell in beta flight now it's moving. So in default, I want the buzzer to be off. Once I click here, that's where the buzzer will start going off. So that's really nice. Okay, so we exit, exit, exit. All right. So next step, let's see what else we have on beta flight. Scroll down. Flip over after death, what I like to call it. Uh, it's this one here. So what this allows you to do is if you flipped over your quads upside down, uh, normally it would not arm. So we would set this as flip over. We would disarm the quadcopter once it falls upside down, disarm everything. And then we were going to set this as flip over after death. So once the quads flipped over on the ground, you can go ahead, click this, and then you arm it. And then you can press right or left, and then it'll flip itself when it's upside down. And once that's done, disarm, remove that. And then you, once you're leveled, just arm again, go ahead and fly. So let's go ahead and set up uh, flip after death here. And we want it to be once it's activated, not on default position, which would be the last part here. And we're going to make it as auxiliary four because we made the, uh, uh, the buzzer as auxiliary three. So save. You didn't have to save, but it's good to save right now. So let's go ahead and add the flip over after that. So we're going to go to channel eight. And we said we wanted this one to be it. We're going to click here while it starts blinking. Remove that. And now it, it, that's it. It's, this is it here exit 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 and let's take a look in beta flight and that's perfect as you can tell this is a three position switch so when i click it once it goes to the middle it's still not activated once i click it again now it's activated and you can go ahead and play with that yellow or orange line and get it to wherever you want so this is how i go about setting up every single quadcopter of mine so now we have the quad bound and set up on the receiver let's go back into beta flight and just double check what's on and what else we would recommend turning on so I'm moving back and forth from the PC to the table. That's what I'm doing here. All right, so let's go to the ports tab. Everything should be set up here. Uh, let's go to configuration. So it's currently running 8K, 2K, but in, in, in reality, this thing could run up to 32K. And if you don't know how to enable 32K, I don't think it'll run 32K out of the box, to be honest. But uh, just keep going up slowly. So we're going to put this 8K, 4K. You know what? We're going to play with it default first, and then we'll upgrade in the field. Accelerometer, barometer, remove this, remove this. You don't need these two. Uh, okay, motor timing. Okay, so this is strange. Now this thing could run DShot 1200 and set to DShot 600. So it's probably everything is just default from the firmware. So set this up to DShot 1200. Motor stop, keep that disabled. Uh, here, 2.5%. That's fine, possibly. Okay, so it's using SBUS. Craft's name, add your name. This will show up in the OSD. We're going to call it the Copus 2. There we go. And uh, let's go down here. Okay, so this is very important here. Okay, so they have everything you need basically turned on. Now, you don't need the LED strip because there's no LED on this. Telemetry, it does have telemetry, so turn it on. That's fine. Air mode, air mode is a must. Uh, OSD is also a must. ESC sensor, um, I guess, yeah, I'll turn it on. Dynamic filter and anti-gravity, we could turn those on, but at the current moment in time, I'm going to keep them disabled, and I want to see how it will uh, fly. 
uh, on default with no anti-gravity and no dynamic filter. So I, I'm going to just leave those default for now. Save and reboot. Don't forget to save. Saving is very important. All right. So this thing does have a barometer, I think. Yeah, it does have a barometer. That's crazy. It's right there. We can see that it does have a barometer. You know what? Let's turn it on. Save and reboot. It doesn't have a magnometer, though, I think. Yeah, it does not. <clears throat> Power and battery. Leave those as is. Okay. So we just got to disconnect, reconnect. Okay. So let's just see. PID tuning. Uh, I forgot my rates at the current moment. Uh, I think it's 42, I think. 42 and then these are like 72 74 yeah i think this is these are my rates i think yeah if i remember correct it differs from controller to controller by the way so depending on which controller i'm going to be setting this up i'll know so i'm going to go ahead and save this you can go ahead and try this out um this is how i like to fly it but i don't know on which controller here so okay we're going to leave the pids as is because we don't know how well it's flying osd you can play with your osd here Craft's name, I want to insert that so when I'm recording, I'm going to know which one it is. So see, Copus 2, I'm going to put it below stabilized mode right there. Okay, and throttle position is really nice because now we know we can go through all the throttle positions. If for some reason there's some noise, we'll know at which throttle level the noise is coming from. That's why I like to add that right there. Uh, it's very useful, by the way. And I think that's really it. Let's see, just double check here. There's really cool, new, a lot of new cool things. VTX channel we don't need. And now we're just going to go ahead and save this guy. I think that's enough. Flight time, battery, amperage, current draw. Okay, so this is the current draw here. I'm actually going to put that here above the wall. No, this over here. You don't want to put it too far out because it could be out of your screen completely. And you can play, you can play with this live while you have your goggles on, by the way. All right, black box log, CLI, we're good in that perspective. Hmm, let's see what else do we have. That's really it. Let's see. Yeah, so smart port for controlling the VTX is currently enabled on UART 6, as you can tell here, smart port. This controls your VTX, and that'll be through the beta fly setup. So uh, that's all it is to set this guy up. Just don't keep forgetting to hit the save button after you're done with everything. Usually this is 4.5, as I remember, uh, and you can play with this if you want. And um, yeah, overall looks pretty good everything looks set up nicely let's see rx law now we're good on this this is d shot beacon so you can instead if you didn't have a buzzer you can set this up to uh beep the from the mo the motors to beep on the specific things here but since we have a buzzer we really don't need that and that's going to be fine and plus if you keep using that too long you might burn out your motors uh so that's why it's nice to have it off and have a buzzer on there so overall looks good everything looks awesome and in the field we'll be testing out to how far we can get this to go i forgot to save it last time how far pit and gyro loop frequency we can bump it up to and um yeah overall we're gonna have to wait until a couple days what's his name joshua bar will be flying it in a couple hours and uh doing this little special tune with this guy so we're gonna try that that tune hopefully he will dump the uh settings for us because i'm really curious to try out that tune and uh we'll see how well everything works out so i really hope you guys enjoyed the video if you found it useful please let me know i can do more of these videos like this and uh you could find the links to everything down below if you could use those those greatly support the channel or if you could join my patreon just a dollar or two a month can go an absolute long way and that's it guys i really hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you next time see you guys take care